without any further ado, let's give Eddie a hand. Okay. How's this thing work? The left clicker. That's it? Okay. How's everyone doing? Good. Awesome. Well, I got the end of the day, so hopefully your energy is still there. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to go through some things around traffic. So I'm going to talk to you about some hard pills to swallow. Uh, most of you guys in this room, this is the conversation you need to hear. It's not the one you want to hear. Uh, but I'm going to do my best to grill it in as much as I possibly can so that we can get back to the basics of e-commerce instead of worrying about all the little hacks and tricks and little things that everyone's trying to advertise that work one time in a one-off situation. Let's get back kind of to the basics of marketing and how this works. So here's all the things I'm going to be covering. I'm not going to leave you in the, in the blank here. Uh, first thing we're going to do is talk about what's the priority. Is it audiences or ads? Uh, a lot of you guys are testing different platforms. You're trying different things out. What takes priority? If you had to pick one or the other, is it going to be audiences or ads? We're going to cover that. Next thing we're going to do is I'm going to go over some uh, content. I'm going to tell you uh, how to uh, essentially create the best converting ads and how to find the best ad copy that's working and the best angles that are working for your audience as quickly as possible without having to spend a ton of money to figure it out. Third thing I'm going to tell you is a little trick that we use to leverage other people's trust. Uh, I know a lot of the topics today were about um, how can we build trust with our audience, you know, buying Facebook groups, doing all these other things that are building trust. I'm going to show you kind of a shortcut that we use from the ad side of things. Someone actually asked that as a question earlier. It's a really good strategy. It's been giving us great ROAS in a lot of different spaces. Um, fourth thing, I'm going to show you how to become untouchable in 2021. A few years ago, quite frankly, I don't know if there's any people like me in the room, but three, four years ago, I used to just run a few lookalike audiences on Facebook, run it to one ad, make hundreds of thousands of dollars a month, drop shipping random products with one ad to a ton of different audiences. The times have completely changed now. CPMs are through the roof. Everyone's grandmother knows how to run a Facebook ad. Um, and things are just changing. So I'm going to show you a, a, a few things that we're doing right now actively in, an, in our agency. And we started about a year ago uh, doing these things and getting ahead of the curve to become untouchable when it comes to the dynamic of 2021. And just to be clear, everything I'm talking about today, I might, if you talk to me a year from now, I might have a different perspective on everything here. And this is completely different from what I was saying a year ago because whatever I'm going to discuss is what's working right now in this moment. So. Take it as immediate action. Don't come back a year from now and say, I tried this thing a year later and it didn't work, Eddie. Cool? Awesome. And the last thing, the hardest pills to swallow, I'm going to tell you the two things that matter in your business and the only two things that matter, and this is all you should care about. Um, and I'll get into that when we get there. Cool? Cool? Awesome. Thanks. So my theory, and we've put it into work over the last year and it's been working very well, is that I would rather take ads, not audiences. Back to the core principle, everyone's freaking out over iOS, everyone's talking about um, my tracking is off, you know, which audiences are working, all these audience segments um, that were working aren't working anymore. And quite frankly, if you really think about marketing or any sort of business that's grown and you've recognized it growing, no one remembers a good audience, but everyone remembers a great ad. Okay? You share ads with your friends, you see ads on TV, you see billboards that are really good, and that is the recall that you have of that brand. And so too many people here are focusing on like, what's the secret look like audience that I can use? What's this, what's this awesome retargeting strategy that I can create? Everyone has tried everything that you are trying to find out. Everyone's tested every audience. Everyone's using the same audience as you are. But what no one's doing is creating captivating ads that are standing out. And the ones that do, and I'll tell you from my experience, we test 50 ads at a time. One works out of these 50, and that one scales companies to millions of dollars a month from that one ad. So I want you guys to kind of start shifting your perspective instead of sitting here trying to hack your way to sick audiences that are going to work temporarily. You need to focus on your content. You need to make better ads that call out your customers and stick in your customer's mind. And also, very important, negate all the people that are not your ideal customer. So great examples is billboard here. Don't read this. If you are not Gary Graff, this is only for him is eliminating everyone that is not the ideal audience. And so I want you to start thinking like this when you come up with ads. If you, uh, if you remember Rich was speaking here earlier about Live Fit, the only thing he really talked about was he makes a fuck ton of content. And that is it. No one here, he didn't tell you about some secret audience strategy. He didn't tell you anything. All he said is we invest whatever we can to get other people to make us more content, to get us to make them more content, and to make more content for ourselves. And that is how he built his entire company. So I want you to just kind of start shifting your mentality there. So here's a framework for what's been working great for video ads recently for us. 
Every best performing video ad, we kind of ran a test. We figured out all these six things are essentially in our best performing ads. So first thing is gonna be an eye-catching hook. Uh, very simple here. In social media, we're scrolling. We probably see 300 ads a day, um, whether you like to believe so or not. And at the end of the day, it's only really the first two seconds that matter. So if you can get the hook there, you can call out your audience. You can do something that kind of shakes the atmosphere a little bit and has them wondering what more. Um, that's really powerful. Product benefits right away. This is kind of the, you know, this product solves X, Y, Z. Um, product demonstration of how it's happening. Very quick, very simple. You don't need to go too much. Identifying the problem and the pain points. You know, this helps with X, Y, Z. And I'm going to show you guys a few examples of some ads that we've done recently that have performed very well in the market. Social proof validation. This is an obvious one. This is probably the strongest point. But you can't just start with social proof because it's kind of boring. So you want to start with these things at the front get your ideal customer watching it, and then when they do, then you can give the social proof, which is probably the last objection they actually have in their head. And then call to action. You'd be surprised. Testing different kinds of call to actions on videos has been very powerful. Between like shop now or stop your eczema or different things that actually verbalize what the decision is. You know, stop your hair loss, get your hair back now. Things like that um, are very good call to actions because they stand out and describe exactly what the problem that's being solved is. And I think too many people are focused on the audiences when the ad itself is essentially the new funnel of today. The ad itself is the first step of your funnel. Too many people are looking at the funnel page as the first step of the funnel. This is the first step. This is the pre-sale. And if you have a good ad, people are sold on your product no matter what the price is when they get to the page. So keep that in mind. Current best performing ad types. Um, we've categorized a ton of different ads. I would say, you know, based on our experience the last few months, so I'm talking like six months recency here. Uh, product demo ads have been awesome. Definitely the highest performing. I'd say like 50% of this category is product demo ads. Showing what your product does, what problems it solves, uh, is a very, very, very foundational top of funnel ad that everyone here needs to be running. I'll show you some examples. Unboxing is very good because it gives people the experience of what they're going to receive. And two, it builds that trust that I'm actually getting this thing. So kind of like what we were talking about earlier with Radio Shack and all these things. Like, you, you trust these brands and you're buying from them because you know whatever you're buying is showing up the way that it looks on the site and is showing up to your door. Unboxing ads subconsciously overcome those objections from people thinking, oh, am I ever going to get this? Showing them it arriving to their door in a nice box, unboxing it, whatever it is, is very powerful. Social proof, you already know what this is. Lifestyle ads, showing people actually not just like holding a supplement bottle, sitting on a bench or in the gym, but actual use case scenarios of people using this throughout their life and showing people different ways they can use this. So a lot of times we shoot products and the company owner will say, here's, here's how we use the product, right? And then what we do is we actually get the product and we think of like five, six other ways that this product can be used, whether it's like in a kitchen or in a bedroom or in the bathroom or actively inside of your car. And we find different ways because you have to educate your customer on all the different ways that, that they're, they can use this product. So a lot of times people have their own limiting beliefs. If you show them one way to use it, they think this is the only way that I can use the product and I don't need this right now, so they move on. But the more you can show them of different use cases of the product, the more, oh, well, the more open your audience gets. Thank you. And then side-by-side -side ads. This is my personal favorite ad. I think it's the most captivating from a watch time perspective. This has the highest average watch time out of all these ads because it builds a sense of curiosity from the first second, and then it makes the user feel like they're watching to solve a problem at the end of it. So I'm going to show you a couple examples of side-by-side -side ads we've used uh, that have been extremely successful as well. So first video here, this is a company called GTech. I'm going to bore you guys with some really cool ads. I don't know if the audio, no. Big part of these ads is the music, but I'm sure you can get the concept. This is a really cool brand that we work with, just to give you a perspective. Uh, we just became uh, an official sponsor of the MLB. So um, it's a heat warming pouch. I'm, actually, I'm not even going to explain it. You'll figure it out. <laughs> hey, these are from G Tech Apparel. Now, this is basically an insulated muff that you put your hands on the inside of. They're insulated and they've got lithium battery powered hand warming inside. So, now, an interesting thing about this design is the heating element is actually inside this sort of padded bar. What's cool about that is that when you grab on it with your hands, the heat goes to the inside of your hands. Buying an extra battery, you have tons of life on these, and they come with dual chargers already, so you don't have to buy that separately. Uh, it's got three different power settings. Just click the button here, and you've got uh, red for the hottest, you've got orange for medium, and green for the low setting. 
So different use cases, we're showing golf, we're showing baseball, we're showing football, we're showing hunting, we're showing as much as we can to capture that audience because it's way easier for us to show this to everyone and capture everyone's interest in one video rather than sit here and trying to segment and create all these mini segment audiences and try to hope that this person inside of this audience finds the pain point that they have. If we can put them all in 40 seconds, then we can capture a much broader audience. Kind of back to the billboard example. Uh, by the way, you should all buy this product. It's really cool. My, even my people in the office, like I keep my office freezing and they all kind of warm their hands so they can type faster. So uh, really cool product, patented. There's nothing like it on the market. Don't be surprised if we're hitting like 40, 50 million a year in a couple years with these guys. Social proof ad, this is uh, one of my favorite ads and actually one of our favorite brands. We shoot content for them every month and can't say numbers, but their recurring revenue is probably higher than most people's full on revenue in this room. Uh, and all they've done is invest in extreme uh, R&D on their products, having the best products and content literally like the most aggressive content client we have. They shoot stuff every two weeks with us um, and they do their own in-house on top of that. So they're investing in content and all they're doing is just billing, building their recurring revenue as high as possible. Uh, but this is their highest performing ad in the last 12 months. Um, I'll kind of show you what it is. I was shook. <laughs> This is the standard one right here, which is the Eczema Honey Miracle Healing Cream. All organic, it doesn't have any chemicals. It's so, good that this product doesn't have a very strong odor or fragrance. But then I found out it's also good for dry skin, sunburn, makeup removal. It's been helping me a lot. With so my huge hook, I was shook, crazy collage, UGC, eye captivating right off, right off the bat. You want to watch what's going on. We have different demographics, if you notice. There's moms, there's young people, you're about to see babies. There is everything inside of this video, no matter who you are in the marketplace, if you have dry skin or eczema or anything in that case, this will cover every demographic from top to bottom on the list. It starts with a guy, it goes to a mom, it goes to young women who look good, then it goes to babies and it's showing a use case on everyone. So it overcomes the objections in everyone's minds of like, Skin care, is it gonna cause rashes? Is it gonna be okay to use? And we're showing it being used on everyone. And each person has a purpose in the video. So each person is overcoming a different objection. It smells really good. Uh, you know, they, they all organic, they don't use chemicals. You know, it helps a lot with my baby's dry skin. So each person has an objective and there's a purpose of each piece of social proof in this video. Side by side, I'm gonna show you two examples of these just cause I told you they're my favorite ads. So, here's the first one. So flavorless protein, the concept was, you know, let's try to figure out how to make shakers lame and make mixing protein and everything else fun. So uh, I love the angle we took here. Honestly, when we first made this video, I probably watched like 20 times straight. The music, everything just is just so perfect. This is one of their uh, best performing ads and definitely uh, the most excited I've ever seen the business owner when he saw a video. So um, we'll skip to the next one. This is another side by side. Oh. There we go. Cool, so this is a um, waterless car wash product, so you can just spray it on your car. Uh, at this point, everyone inside of our entire company has a bottle in their car and they just spray their, we're from Georgia, so pollen is a shit show for like three months out of the year. So I come in the morning and I see everyone spraying their cars and like keeping them clean and stuff, so kind of built a cool concept around it. So the concept here, I'm sure you'll figure it out quickly, is like, how much faster and easier the person on the left is washing their car. Person on the right spends an entire hour sitting there washing their car as opposed to the person on the left in and out right away. So super cool concept. We gamified it. We made it look kind of like, you know, a, a fighter's video game where it's like one versus the other and then kind of showing the how the product's being used. And then two more videos for you. One, and this is, 
This is a very important concept from a top of funnel perspective, which I'm going to dig into at the end of this presentation. You want to have an unbeatable offer, whether that's like a guarantee of some sort. Like, let me use Purple Mattress as an example. Everyone thinks Purple Mattress got really big because their ads were super sick, which yes, 100%, 50% of the formula. I'm talking about content here. I'm not going to say that's not the case. But what I believe it was, was a 100-day money-back guarantee. We come to your house. We pick up the mattress. If you're trying this new piece of technology that you haven't tried and you don't like it, then you can return it. And a lot of people like my wife will hate it on day 101, and now we're stuck with a purple mattress. So um, you want to have an unbeatable offer if you don't have a strong brand. An unbeatable offer is what, it's what's going to get people in the door to actually try your product. If you believe in your product, you think you actually have a badass product on the market, you're not just drop shipping some bullshit, then you want to have whatever you can do to figure out whatever offers are working and create that one unbeatable offer uh, that'll help you scale. This video is from uh, Alex Ermozzi's, um brand, Prestige Labs. So uh, again, quite frankly, nothing crazy, secret, or proprietary about this protein. They had the best doctors in the world come together and try to create a protein that was very well flavored. But there's not like one ingredient that's absolutely game changing and should be the reason you use this. Uh, so we came up with a really cool offer and we've scaled this thing like crazy. So. So buy any supplement, get free protein. It's captivating, there's ice cream, someone's hand gets slapped right away, what's going on here? Boom, ice cream looks delicious. You know, We're giving away free protein with an offer. And honestly, we, we, we basically bumped up the margins 30% on the retail side. So we inflated our prices 30%. We ran this promo and this protein is three times as expensive as other protein on the market and everyone's buying it left and right because they get a free tub with a purchase. So they're buying $100 fat burners where they can go buy a similar fat burner for $35. Because the offer is so good, they don't even care. And then this last video here, we were given the impossible objective of selling uh, Viagra on Facebook ads. So, <laughs> uh, yes. So uh, we we helped this brand uh, get from like three to now. I think we're in like 20 states. Um, but this is a really cool project, just behind the scenes, so you can kind of appreciate it. We bought a helmet rig that hosts a huge ass camera. Like, hold that up, like twice the size of this camera, so it's really heavy. And this guy was basically having a camera out here the whole time on his head, and his neck was destroyed by the end of the day. Um, but we surpassed the Facebook policies, and we scaled this thing pretty well. So I'm going to show you this ad. Thanks, Mikey. So catching hook. Shots, quick, lips, lingerie, what's going on? So very simple, 15 second ad, right off the bat, shot, 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 lips, lingerie, our target market is a guy, if you didn't guess it. <laughs> They're probably going to watch the video, what's this girl doing? And then it ends, obviously, with that. Um, I like the ending there, where she just pushes him on the ground. And um, this has been awesome, tremendously awesome for us, just because, like, especially on Facebook ads, you can't sell Viagra. I mean, you can sell like photos of like happy people and shit. You guys know how it is. But uh, it's hard to sell this. So there's, no, there's nothing here that broke policy. We even did another one. I took it out of the presentation. but. Uh, we did another one that um, that was actually for the gay population too. So it was around two two gay guys, which gay Viagra Facebook, impossible. We still did it. So um, just to show you, content content super powerful here. So uh, yeah, you're gonna need to help me again. <laughs> That's what's happening. So cool. When you click it, move the mouse back because I'm clicking it and then it's replaying the video. That's why. And then this is the last one, so disruptive content. This is another Prestige Labs video. Uh, my wife in the back loved this video, so she added it uh, like 10 minutes ago to the presentation. So uh, you can go ahead and play it. So objective was to 
you know, take away the stigma that testosterone boosters were just for men. Um, and we wanted to kind of deliver the fact that it was for women, but it was cool, it was sexy, it wasn't like you were gonna grow hairy arms and all these things, so uh, we kind of, you know, did it this way as a hook. The guy's trying to do a pull up, the girl's doing it like twice as easy. Our original concept was actually like a dude curling a bar and a girl like next to him curling like four times the weight basically, but it was, it was too much. Uh, it kind of went back to the hairy arms thing. So anyways, uh, cool concept, this, this ad did really well. Uh, that being said, in our actual ad accounts, I'm talking Facebook and Instagram, 42% of the time, photos do better than videos on ads. And it's because you can capture a thousand words in a photo or whatever the quote is, you know. Uh, that being said, there's a massive opportunity cost. And you guys as brand owners in this room need to understand Sometimes it's not just about the CPA and what is the lowest cost for purchase. A lot of it is brand recall. A lot of it is developing that brand equity in the consumer's mind. So opportunity cost of actually using photos more than videos. You know, you can't retarget picture viewers. This is a very important one, especially with all these iOS changes. The one thing that is constant is Facebook and Instagram's platform themselves. So you can still track video views. You can track page visits. You can track everything inside of the platform as aggressively as you did before, and I'm sure it's gonna get even better somehow because they're having trouble tracking things off platform. So Facebook's rewarding people that are watching more video content. They're, they're rewarding the, the people who are putting those videos out there because they're keeping the viewers on the actual platforms themselves rather than taking them off for clicks. So the more view watch time you have, the more you can retarget people, the lower CPMs that you have, it's rewards across the board. And most importantly, like I said, brand recall is much lower with images. You know, very rarely do you see an image and remember the brand name. You'll remember the image itself, but you won't remember the brand name. Um, with videos, it's a much different case. I see a Bud Light commercial, it's hilarious. 20 seconds in, I see Bud Light. I see a Geico commercial, it's hilarious. 20 seconds in, I see Geico. So when I go and search for that commercial again, I don't type in, you know, um, some whatever it was about. I type in Geico, this is the ad that I'm looking for. So. Brand recall is a lot stronger when it comes to videos. So um, if there's any lesson so far from this, I want you all to just invest a lot more uh, in your content. Um, something also, just kind of a side tangent, from a social media advertising perspective, this is specifically Facebook and Instagram, not other platforms. If you actually track your user behavior, you'll notice a very large quantity of people that are seeing your ads are actually clicking to your profiles before they actually go to your website. So user behaviors have changed, and if you all kind of self-evaluate yourself, you'll realize you do the same thing. You'll see an ad, it'll be from a company, you'll look at the profile picture, you'll read the name, and you'll click on that. You won't even click on the learn more button because we're just so accustomed to avoiding those things. So we want to stay on the platform. So we go to the profile, then we look at the Instagram profile. Oh my gosh, this thing is awesome, look at all these things, they're posting frequently, look at the cool content that they have. Then from there, people are, either there's still the floating button at the bottom because you came through an ad, or two, people are just clicking the link in the bio and going to your page to make that decision. So try to use more UTM codes, try to use better tracking for you guys internally and track your user's behavior. I'm sure it's different for different industries and different um, you know, products that you guys are selling, but across the board, you'll see, you're starting to see a huge shift of people evaluating your profile on the social media platforms to see if they like and trust you before they even go to your website. So that is an advantage to everyone here. You can make better content and with all these tracking and performance issues, you want people to spend more time in places that you can actually track them rather than going to your website and potentially losing that tracking functionality. <clears throat> so uh, here's two little uh, quick things that I do to get uh, the best converting angles on the first try. And uh, I always go toe to toe with my team um, and I always win. So here's how I do it, it's pretty easy. Um, if you're selling a product, more likely than not, that product is already being sold on Amazon by a ton of other people. Spend some time, maybe like a half day, go through all the reviews that you possibly can read and document what the most common factors of the reviews are. So bad and good. If they are bad factors, document the top three, four things that people are complaining about that the product doesn't do or sucks at doing and use this in your ad copy to overcome that objection from the beginning, our product does this, this, and this, you know on the negative side, people are complaining that their products don't do those things. So if you can overcome those objections from beforehand, you'll probably be a lot more successful on the copy side. 
Same goes for the good stuff, obviously. You know, the good stuff, you wanna talk about it. You wanna talk about the things that actually matter. So take a little effort, maybe make like a little Excel spreadsheet, type up the things that are most common and kind of tally it up and see which ones hold the most weight percentage in people's minds that are reviewing and then use that for your ad copy. That's number one. Number two, if you have a, a list for emails and you're trying to launch new products or even trying to revamp different angles that you're trying to use, some powerful stuff here. I send an email survey with a giveaway and I make it a banging giveaway like a $500 Amazon gift card or a $1,000 Amazon gift card. You know, it depends on the size of your business and the size of your list, what's gonna be worth it. Um, but I send a giveaway, I ask these specific questions. All I need you to do is just fill these four questions out and then you'll be entered in the giveaway. Worst case, you don't win, you're still a winner, we'll send you a prize and then I send them like a 25% discount code or 30% discount code to the people. Uh, what's your biggest fear when shopping a new skincare brand? Example, I'm gonna use skincare here. What do you want most out of a you know, face cleanser? What would be a good incentive, hello, offer, what would be a good incentive to try a new skincare brand, question mark? And this third question right here is a gold mine for you because you will get honest feedback from consumers that are in your target market that have already bought your product on what it would take to get them to leave what they've been using for years and give yours a shot. And for most of us in the room, you're not inventing some crazy product that doesn't exist in the marketplace. You're replacing someone else's consumable product that they're already using for themselves. So this is a very powerful question. Do not underestimate this question. And then last one, what are two things that matter most when trying a face cleanser, example? So this is really good. Another thing you can do with this same exact giveaway model that we do to crush it on the content side, um, depending on your list size, obviously bigger giveaway is better. Um, but I incentivize people with a very simple thing. I say, hey, we're gonna enter you into a $1,000 Amazon gift card giveaway. If you don't win, we still are gonna give everyone a prize, just like I said. All we need you to do is use, have the product in hand or show us where you're using the product and send us a 15 to 30 second video talking about what you like the most about the product that you're using and you know, why you bought it in the first place. And so people are gonna be like, oh my God, I saw it on an ad and I love this so much, this is my favorite product, it's done X, Y, Z for me, and that's what I love the most about it. And just from giving away a $500 Amazon gift card, instead of sitting here shopping for thousands of influencers and figuring out who's gonna take your product and who's gonna shoot one and who's not gonna do it and who's too expensive, you have a list that you already have of customers that are in your market. You're literally trying to sell to the same people. They look the same, they sound the same, they're the same age and you're literally getting free UGC from them for a $500 gift card. It's, it's a steal. So if any of you have a list and you're like, oh my gosh, I need more UGC, this should be what you write up tonight and you send it out. Make it a four day giveaway. Make it expire in four days. Don't stretch it out too long or no one ever does it. I like to make it expire on like a Sunday night uh, because then I can just spam people with like two, three emails on Sunday telling them like the giveaway is about to end and then everyone picks up their phone. You use a Google form to have it upload. They literally open the Google form, they put in their name, and they punch in the video and it uploads from their phone. Super simple. Cool? But you ask people to send in, sorry, send a video that answers those No, no, two different things. So one thing, um, I just kind of added the, the UGC as like an extra thing that we do that's very similar to this. This is a text-based form, so Google form, text-based. The giveaway is a different concept, same idea of a strategy overall. Uh, we just have them put their, um, like, where do you, oh, and this is an easy way for us to capture like more information like a phone number if we didn't collect it originally. We say like, where do you want us to text you if you won and things like that. But I'll ask like name, email number, and then um, uh, click here to upload your video and it'll just be like an upload link to a drive. Um, so pretty cool stuff, but it, honestly like every time I pick up a brand with a list that doesn't have any UGC or content, this is the first thing we do. Um, strategy we use to basically buy trust from other people um, um, to uh, Rich for LiveFit, so we actually do this. Um, very simple graphic here, nothing too wild, but just an example. We'll take like, if you, if you look at the left side, that's what most people do. They run top of funnel traffic, they show some stuff, and then they retarget with like a sick offer. Spend $75, get a free, you know, Patriot Pop pre-workout. So from Veg Nutrition and then from Veg Nutrition as well. Doesn't garner that much trust. They still don't know your brand. Now you're trying to convince them with a good offer, which obviously is what you need to do. On the other side, what we've done that's been very successful, it's doubled our ROAS in middle of funnel. So um, not like super hot people that have like abandoned car and things like that, but like one step above that, people who have engaged with us, watch videos, things like that, actually has a higher ROAS by like 35% on our bottom of funnel traffic, which is like unheard of, it should be the other way around, because we run this strategy. 
Um, so basically, we'll have the brand um, find influencers that are already using their product. Um, I think Lowe's dropped a tool earlier that does that for you right now uh, before we did it manually. Um, but essentially, we'll go to those influencers. We'll tell them, hey, listen, we got a pretty sick deal for you. We know you use our products. We're going to send you some stuff for free. All we ask is we get access to your Facebook page. We're going to run ads from your page. We're going to get them all approved by you. Um, and in return, essentially, we'll give you a percent of the ad spend that we're running on your pages themselves. And in return, you're probably going to get a shit ton of followers because you're a hot girl and we're running you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars of traffic a year to your page. So you're going to get pretty famous off that as well. Um, Percentage of ad spent. What's your typical like starting offer on that? Uh, five or less. Okay. Yeah, I'd say like 3%. Is good. It depends how much you're spending too. You know, like if you're spending 100 grand a month, giving someone like 5% is five grand a month for them doing nothing. It's a great deal for them. Okay. And you got to remember the, the the real trick here is. Um, can you go back for a second? I, yeah. Uh, the real trick here is um, kind of convincing them of the upside of you're running this much money to their page. Yep. And like think about how much following you're going to get, and they'll quickly see like. Oh, I got 100 followers today. Like, where did these come from? So, um, that's kind of the leverage that we play. But we'll we'll remarket using the same products. And even now, we've taken these examples further. So these are kind of like Veg just dropped Turmeric Plus. Uh, that's ad copy on these two. We've switched now recently to more like easier lifestyle-based copy that isn't selling. Like, oh my gosh, I love this new turmeric gummy. It tastes amazing. You know what I mean? Something super simple that's not kind of salesy and makes it feel like it's an organic post in the Instagram feed. What's up? Um, we use it everywhere. We've seen that it has the biggest impact in middle of funnel for us. Um, I'm sure you can use it in bottom of funnel, but just audience size, bottom of funnel is going to be smaller than middle of funnel. And if I'm going to use a strategy like this, I'd rather pump it out on like the, the biggest audience that I can. That being said, um, to, to give you another way to use this, like on Black Friday and big sales like that, we'll take these people and they have some pretty big audiences. And what we'll do is we'll actually create a custom audience of their people on their Instagram page and then run an ad from them to people who are following them and engaging with them of whatever that huge sale is and pump that traffic into the website. So that's another way that you can kind of use it. So I have three questions for you. Uh, the first one, how many creatives do you test per week? And the second one is how much do you spend on a creative before you decide to add a kid? And the third one, we test a lot of creatives, right? And we found out that performance varies between if we launch before a uh, week As quickly as possible, we test. Um, I don't want to give you a number of how much to test. It's going to depend on your budget. You know, spending, you know, fifty dollars a day and trying to run twenty-five ads is is not going to be too effective. You probably want to shrink that to like four or five ads. So it's going to depend on your budget. Um, the more budget you have, the more you should spend. Just to give you a strategy that we do that helps us. We have one campaign that's always active that's called uh, like an ad bank campaign. And we'll have an open audience in the demographics that we're trying to target. And we'll spit all our ads into there. And whatever ads are winning over time, we'll pause and we'll take them and we'll put them in the rest of our ad sets that are actually trying to scale and perform. And then we basically keep testing new creatives in this one open campaign to try to figure out which ones work best. That's two. And there was a third question. I forgot what it was. Yeah. All the time, yeah. There's one question I missed, though. No, no. Okay. You sure? How many? We actually do a very, very similar thing. Okay, cool. Um, like I said, it depends on the budget. So um, I would test as many as possible. And something you can do to test without spending money that's more effective than everyone seems to think um, on your Instagram, just post more frequently. And at the end of the month, go to your insights and figure out what the highest engaging posts that you actually had were. And that's probably your target market. And that's probably the posts that are going to perform best on ads. So just an easy way to just put in a little effort once a month, schedule out your posts, and at the end you can just read the data instead of having to spend money on it. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, with the user-generated content that you get from the customers, uh, let's say you have 10, 20 videos you got submitted from the customers, uh, are you using them for ads? Do you need to ask them the permission from the customers or do you put like, terms and conditions before they submit the video? On the form, on the giveaway form, on the Google form, I make everyone check a box that says, I give permission to XYZ brand to use my video for national advertisements in the United States and Canada. And just to follow up, uh, is there specific forms that you use for them to drop a video usually? Because mm -hmm. I know some demographics are like older age, so they don't know if they're not so happy. Google Forms, super easy. You click the button on the email, 
it opens up a form and it has a button that says click here to upload. You press it and you pick the video from your phone. Yeah, super easy. Last question, I'll keep going. What's up? Yeah. on a conversion basis. So if you're reading like cost per conversion in an ad account, you'll notice a lot of your winning ads are actually photos. They're not videos. Oh, so, to me, that means videos win 58%. Correct. So videos is better. Well, I mean, are you, gonna, are you gonna not run photos if they beat videos almost half the time? 42% better. 42%. No, no, 42% of the time. Yeah, so let me clarify. 42% of the time, photos do better on a cost per acquisition standpoint than videos do in the ad account themselves. So when we're scanning all the ads and we're filtering from top to bottom, cost per acquisition, lowest to highest, there will be 42% of the time, the top ones are gonna be photo ads because it's easier to see, you understand the concept, you click. But like I said on that slide, opportunity cost is Brain recalls lower, you can't retarget them if they don't buy because now all these iOS issues, you're having trouble with it. But with a video, if someone watched half your video, you can retarget them if they're not a buyer. So, so you're sorry? So you're leaning toward more video ads, that's what I'm saying. I, yeah, video ads, but my point at the end of it was more to say, don't neglect photo ads. Like, I'm telling you all these cool things that you can do on video ads, that doesn't mean neglect photo ads, you always wanna test both, but there's an opportunity cost to testing images over videos, even if they perform better on the front end sometimes. I said last question, but I'm gonna let you in. Everywhere, everywhere. Yeah, everywhere, yeah. I, I, I actually think photo ads work better in retargeting, personally. Um, What's the name of the platform you mentioned for um, getting these influencers to join your brand? That's the one Los mentioned earlier. I don't know the name. Um, yes. That one, so I don't, I don't use that one, but when Lowe said I was like, duh, this is what I should use now. Um, in, in the past, just because we're an agency, we have our own e-com brands, but usually the business owner and whoever the project manager is from their end is in charge of like finding these influencers. We just give them the guidance and then their job is to find them and we kind of help them negotiate. So one important thing, if your business is dependent on one source of sales, you do not have a business. So hard pill to swallow here. All of you guys, not all of you, but. A lot of people in this room are scaling on one platform and that's kind of what they're dependent on. What happens when an update comes out, you know, one week, you don't know until one week before and that shuts down your entire business. I've seen this happen a lot of the time. You don't actually have a business, you don't have any sense of security. So I kind of drew up this chart of the top five platforms um, that we're using from a creative side right now uh, that are working very well. And important note here, so a lot of people have trouble moving off of Facebook, Instagram, or Google to any of these three platforms down here uh, because it's kind of this like, oh my gosh, I can't make creatives for all these brands. So I'm gonna give you a little pro tip that we've been doing as of exactly a year ago from today. Uh, where's the camera? Yo, can you hold up your camera? So, oh, okay, cool, yeah. So on the bottom of this camera, there's a, little, there's a battery grip and that actually allows him to flip the camera and hold it vertically. So if we're shooting with a professional camera, we shoot everything vertically. If we're shooting with an iPhone, we shoot everything vertically. Even if it's gonna be a square ad, even if it's gonna be a four by five ad, and what we're doing consciously is on Facebook and Instagram, the biggest real estate that you can take up is four by five, and that is essentially like 80% of the vertical screen itself, and you can run those as feed ads. So when we're shooting, we consciously are shooting from beginning to end, to be able to use it on Facebook and Instagram, but duplicate it to Snapchat and TikTok and Pinterest as quickly as possible. So if you're consciously making an effort from the beginning to be conscious of how you're shooting your ads, then it takes very minimal effort to take an ad from Facebook and Instagram, go to Snapchat and TikTok, find the same audiences or very similar audiences, and run those same ads in 20% of a bigger of a frame because you've already shot that way. The problem is most people don't think like that. They think I'm gonna make an ad for Facebook and Instagram. And the benefit to you guys is if you actually put some effort into making content, everyone's trying to compete on Facebook and Instagram because they can just upload a photo or they can upload a random video to the platform. And they're not competing on Snapchat and TikTok because they're afraid to shoot vertical videos and they just aren't familiar with it. And if you just kind of take the little extra effort to actually shoot that way from the beginning, uh, you have a huge jump. Um, so let me go over a couple pros and cons. Yeah. Like, so if you have a video that's on a landing page, it's always like 
landscape. Yeah. So clipping in like user generated content, you go from like this really nice wide shot, whatever, B roll, whatever, to like the user generated stuff like this. So I guess like, are you saying just to be okay with that and like add, add videos different than landing page video? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm talking consciously from like an advertising perspective. Yeah. From a landing page perspective though, square videos work all the time. So it doesn't necessarily need to be 16 by nine. Uh, that's one thing. And two, even for like YouTube now, if you get on YouTube, they're moving to vertical content and YouTube ads can run in square and in four by five. So like when we run a YouTube ad and someone's on a phone, it doesn't just take up the top third of the screen, it takes up the entire fucking screen. So it's like a much more user-friendly experience. And even YouTube, the most 16 by nine platform in the world is shifting towards that kind of vertical content. So I'm not talking about landing pages. Um, that's kind of a different conversation, but I'm just being more like platform conscientious when we're shooting from the beginning. So a couple pros and cons, I'll just run through them quickly. Pro, Facebook, easy to use, doesn't require video. That's why everyone in this room is doing it. Con, literally everything else. We can all agree, ban ad accounts, you know what I mean? Ban ads for no reason, uh, higher CPMs. You know, one day things work, the next day they don't, the third day they work again, who knows what's happening. Google YouTube Pro, it's keyword based and it has the best data out of everyone, hands down, no questions asked. The two most uh, search, uh, what is it? The two highest search platforms with the most traffic are Google and YouTube and Google owns both. So why wouldn't you use them to run advertising to people who are searching for your stuff. Very no brainer. Um, I, Abe in the back, good example, because he's a friend of mine, I can use it. He scaled a fitness brand to $2.4 million a month in 60 days from $30,000, all because of Google ads. People are searching for it. Like, why are you even bothering trying to send it to them on Facebook and figure out an audience when people are already looking for it? So, con, it's harder to manage and it is more expensive on a per click basis. Um, Snapchat, pro, they buy a lot of third party data. If you've ran Snapchat ads, they literally buy data from credit companies like Experian and all these reporting companies and they buy data from credit card companies like Visa, American Express. So I can go in and for example, I'm, I wanna target someone who has, just an example off the top of my head, who has bought a skincare product in the last 30 days. Like I don't know any other platform that you can kind of do that on um, and it's actually a lot better targeting than people think. CPMs are dirt cheap like Josh was telling you about TikTok. It's the same on Snapchat. I just checked the average CPMs on the accounts we're running in the last week, $2.82 CPMs. On Facebook, some of you guys are paying 20, 30 times that number. So uh, just for reference, what's up? Um, you gotta keep trying. I mean, I don't know how much you tried, to be fair. Um, but in my experience, over time, Snapchat has a pretty good ROI and it's, it's pretty constant. Um, so, and surprisingly, there's an older demographic. Everyone thinks they're kids, just like Josh was saying about TikTok. Same applies to Snapchat. There's an older demographic. They'll spend money and they love watching their friends' Snapchat stories. My wife's mom posts 300 stories a day, so. <laughs> uh, TikTok, same thing, pro, low supply, high engagement. You'll notice there's not that many ads right now. On Snapchat, one out of three stories is an ad, so. Con, it's very trend heavy, it's fast changing, so you gotta be on top of it. Our best performing TikTok ads are with the trend. So I don't know if you remember, like there was a trend with like a laser line going down and like, does everyone know what I'm talking about? Like the line goes down. So like, for example, Eczema Honey, that brand we were talking about earlier, that trend happened, they're like, yo, we need TikTok ads. We filmed a few that were trend heavy like that, blew everything else out the water because it was trend heavy and people took it as organic. So. You slide up, that thing starts, and you're like, oh, another one of these, perfect timing. So as long as you can stay on top of it, you'll be good. The cool part is TikTok doesn't require high quality content. So you don't need to sit there planning a shoot with a camera. If some new trend comes out, shoot it in your, in your room, wherever it is, whatever it is, with the product base around it, and you'd be surprised how quickly that works. Uh, and last one, Pinterest, good for awareness. It's a really good demographic. They're buyer conscious people, they wanna spend money. Downside is their attribution window is stupid long. Every Snapchat rep wants you to wait 30 days to measure your attribution window, and it's not a healthy way for us to run our companies. But I'll tell you this, it is a search platform, so you have search data, and two, it is very buyer friendly because everyone's going on Pinterest to shop for ideas to eventually buy something. So uh, just some cool stuff there that you should definitely utilize. And the two things that make all of it work that are definitely the most important things, Matt, how much time do I got? Two minutes? Three? Three. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat>
Two things that make all of it work. Oh, what's going on? AOV and lifetime gross margin, not value. Lifetime gross margin, okay? Everyone here is so trying to figure out what's the sickest audience and what ads are converting now and all this stuff. But I'll tell you, it is way easier to increase your average order value and your lifetime gross margin on a customer than it is to sit there and try to figure out how to lower your CPMs that you have absolutely no control over, okay? So two powerful AOV strategies, just some cool stuff that you can kind of experiment with for yourselves. Uh, I call this one the best seller tease. Take your best seller, offer it for free with a minimum purchase of X amount of dollars. I've done this in the past. There was a business I worked with. 48% uh, of their revenue came from a specific hat that they sold. They were an apparel brand selling clothing. Uh, their average order value was 50 bucks. I said, hey, based on kind of where your pricing is at, let's make it $75 and get a free hat. They went nuts. The CFO almost fired me. We, uh, we ran this campaign and we did it before Black Friday, so it wasn't even Black Friday. And unfortunately, by the time Black Friday came around, they were sold out of everything on their entire store. So uh, average order value went up to $92 from $55, and the conversion rate went up 1.2% on the store. Because we took the best seller, we gave it to them for free if you spend X amount, and people don't look at, they look at it as a game, they're like, oh, I can just get it for free instead of paying for it. Let me just buy a few more shirts and get there. So uh, really cool play. You can do this all the time without using your best seller. You can make limited time offers, like for, you know, for clothing people, since we're using that example, make a specific shirt that only is being sold in this amount of time. And the only way to get that, you can't buy it on the site. The only way to get it is to spend X amount of money to unlock that shirt being sent to you because it's a limited quantity shirt. So a lot of cool things you can do with that kind of psychology, fear of missing out on something like this with a minimum order value. People will spend way more money to get free shit and they love it way more than discounts and you can get way more money out of them. So just keep that in mind. Number two, tiered cashback vouchers. This is a genius play because I, I think the first person that I saw using it was Express like seven years ago, at least like on a very mass scale. If you're giving them a cashback voucher to your store, you're actually giving them like half the money because the rest of it is, is one, half of it's cost of goods sold, half of it's just profit to you. So you're actually giving them half. So instead of giving them like 20%, you can literally give them 35% in a voucher back to the store, which means you're actually giving them 17% on your actual bottom line. So you're giving them way more money, but they're forced to spend it on your store. So, you know, I see Express do this all the time, spend 225 and get $100 back, and I eat that shit up all the time. So we use this a lot. You can get very creative with it, especially if you have multiple SKUs. If you have one product, it's gonna be a little bit harder, um, but just keep that in mind, another really cool strategy you can use. Um, yeah, so what I would do is I would put it on the bar, um, and there's a lot of apps where you can use where the bar um, actually calculates it for you. So like, you know, you're $28 away from getting a $20 voucher, and then it bumps them up to the next one when you get there, so. Um, and instead of lifetime value, I want you guys to start evaluating six months lifetime gross margin. So stop trying to think lifetime value too long. Oh, I made $500 on this customer. Evaluate your gross margin after cost of a good sold on that product in six months time span. Our, our goal here as e-com business owners is to create the quickest cash flow possible. So if you've noticed a trend from all the best guys here, at the end of the day, they're willing to lose or break even on a customer on the front end to win on the back end, but they're not waiting a year or two years to do it unless they're getting a shit ton of funding and it doesn't matter at the end of the day. So keep your cash flow tight, evaluate it on a six month uh, interval and uh, start doing a lot more things on the back end to make that money. So uh, you have a kid's clothing brand, right? Yep. Last example and I'm done. Let me give you an idea because I've done this before for a kid's clothing brand. You can tag all the products based on how old the kid is gonna be or what size they are based on the products. And, if, and you can create one email flow, which Los has an amazing email company, by the way. If you guys don't have your email set up, you should talk to him. Email flows, you can literally make a flow where if someone buys this size, you know in two months, they're gonna be this second size, because it's a baby, they're growing quickly. So you can insert one huge flow that's conditionally split wide, where you're bumping someone from buying size small, and you know in two months automatically they're gonna want a medium. So in 40 days, you automatically are injecting them into a sequence that's selling them on mediums because their kid is growing out of their small, and so on, and so on, and so on, and you build it one time, and this thing where one customer on the front end is bringing you, you know, $100 on clothing, this baby is costing $1,500 by the end of 12 months because they're buying so much more stuff because you know when they're growing sizes and no other person does. They're just trying to target moms and you're targeting the specific size because you know how old the baby is. So, 
I think that's it. Thank you so much, everyone. I hope I was a help.